If you think back to when we did our earlier lessons in chapter one, we had one variable and we had to isolate it, right? We had to get everything away from the variable. In this lesson, there's multiple variables. When you have two or more variables in any given equation, you have this thing called a literal equation. So the tricky thing about literal equations is that you have multiple variables, so you have to know which one to isolate. The directions will always tell you which one is the one that has to be by itself, because if they don't tell you, then you could really pick any variable. So it really matters which one you're trying to isolate. The way that you do that is by solving for one variable in terms of the others. So there could just be one other, or there could be lots of variables. So we'll see examples of both in a moment. If you look at example one, we've got an equation with two variables. So typically back in chapter one, we would always get the x by itself. But y is not any less important of a variable than x is. Uh, they're just different letters. So they will always tell you when there's multiple variables, which one you have to get by itself. In this instance, they're telling us that they want us to solve the equation for y. So we have to get the y isolated. So the y stays where it is, don't move the y, but then the 5x has to move and the 2 has to move. Now we're going to treat this 5x like one unit together. We're going to move it together. So if you think about it, we would drop a line down the equal sign. And just like you would solve the equation 2y plus 5 equals 6, you'd say move the 5, then divide by 2. We're going to do the exact same thing. Only now instead of 5, it's 5x. So we're going to move this whole unit together. We're not just going to move the 5. We're going to move 5x all in one shot. So let's subtract 5x from both sides. That whole thing travels together. And then I have 2y equals 6 minus 5x. So this inverse should look a little fam more familiar to you. We're going to divide both sides by 2 because we want to get the y by itself. Leave the y alone, move everything else. So I'll divide by 2. And now everything divides by 2. You have to keep the equation the same. You can't just pick and choose parts of the equation to divide by. So even though it looks like a multi I'm dividing by 2 more on the right, it's balanced because everything is dividing by 2. If I only divided once here and once here, then one of these three pieces isn't being balanced. So that might be something you want to note down on your paper, that when you do your division, everything has to divide because that will keep everything equal. So these cancel, and I have y equals. Well, this is 3, and you can write 2.5x, but I'm actually going to leave it as 5x over 2. And you'll see why as we get further into this chapter, we're going to leave things as fractions. It will be a lot more helpful when they're written as fractions. So just go with me for now. You'll find out more specifically why later. And that's it. We solved the equation for y. y is by itself, and that's what they wanted. So even though it looks more complex than the equations from chapter 1, we're doing the same things. Let's check out example 2. Now over here, it talks to you about a formula. A formula is just one representation of how one variable relates to another. So V, L, and W, and H are all relating to each other using this formula for the volume of a pyramid. And again, they're telling us which variable they want by itself. They want the H by itself. So we're going to move everything over to the left because the H is right here. So we'll leave it, leave the variable alone, move everything else. So I'm going to rewrite the formula just so I have it written down in the bigger space. One third L W H. Okay, so drop a line. Now the first thing that makes this equation look really complicated is this one third. I want to get this one third away because it's making the equation look more complex. So if you think back to lesson 1.1, how do you 
inverse one-third? The answer is multiply by the reciprocal. So that cancels, and then I do 3 over 1 over here. Or just 3. Actually, I'll do that because it looks silly to put the 3 over 1. So then I get 3V equals LWH. And again, they want the H by itself, so we have to move the L and the W. Now, just like when we were up here, we move the whole 5x as one unit together. I can move the LW as one unit together. I can move it over together. Now, what operation do you have over here? This is all multiplication. So the inverse of multiplication is going to be division. And because I want to move them, and I can move them all as one unit together, Leave the H, because that's what they want, and I'm going to move LW together, just like I moved 5X up here. Move it all together. So let's divide by LW, and then you get H equals 3V over LW, and it doesn't matter whether you use lowercase or capitals. It will when you get to college, but not right now. And the H is by itself, so I did what they wanted. All right, let's check out another formula that you're hopefully a little familiar with. This formula is the formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius, 5 ninths times F minus 32. So we use Fahrenheit here in the United States, but most other countries use Celsius, just like most other countries use the metric system. So people who have international conversations, people who are business men or women that work internationally, or if people communicate with others internationally, um, then they need to be able to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius or the customary system, which is what we use in the United States, and the metric system. So real life example, let's calculate something. Which has the greater temperature, the sun or this lightning bolt? So the sun is given in Fahrenheit and the lightning bolt is given in Celsius. Um, so they give us a formula and let's just plug stuff in and figure it out. So you can do it one of two ways. The first way would be to take the sun temperature plug it in for F and find out what the sun would be in Celsius because then you can compare it with the lightning. The other way is to take the lightning, plug it in for the Celsius, and then find the Fahrenheit value of the lightning and then see how it compares to the sun. So it doesn't matter which one you do. Um, based on the formula, it looks like it might be easier to plug the formula for the sun in, the temperature for the sun. Um, and then solve for C. So I'll do that, but I'm going to write the formula. C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. I'm just going to write it over again. And now I'll plug in the temperature for the sun. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that so it doesn't make, I don't think it's a decimal point, minus 32. All right, got to get my trusty calculator out, and let's do it. 11,000 minus 32 is 10,968 times 5 ninths. That gives me a Celsius temperature for the sun as 6,000. 93, and I'm rounding because it's 0.3 repeating. So I'm just rounding it because it doesn't have to be precise. So that represents the sun. Clearly, lightning is significantly hotter because it's 30,000 degrees Celsius. So the lightning is going to be the hotter temperature. Now, you could have, like I said, plugged in the 30,000 into the formula and found out what that is in Fahrenheit. It's going to be a little more complicated because you'd have to do inverses, whereas here I'm just doing uh, order of operations. But either way, the lightning should end up being a greater temperature. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.